as we cut the ribbon, we are opening the doors of this house for the presence of God. This will be a habitation, a dwelling place of God, that people that are broken, that are lost, will come to this place to encounter the love, the grace, and the mercy of God. This building is not gonna to go to heaven, but this building will be a vehicle and a vessel that we can use to plunder hell and populate heaven. But it's gonna happen as we ourselves firstly get committed to our assignment. And what that is to be followers of Christ, to be full on for Jesus. If it's God's will for your life, you can do it by the power and the anointing of God. No matter what the odds are against you, no matter who the haters are, no matter who the belittlers are, no matter the opposition, no matter the devil, if God blessed you, you cannot be cursed. Want a quick recap of this past Sunday? Well, you're at the right place. Welcome to the move. Wow, the first Sunday of April was amazing. With Pastor Art preaching a message in season, for a time such as this. Let's hear what our members had to say. Pastor Ott just showed me again that you never should lose the vision. If you are called, keep, keep true to the calling and don't give up. Um, it's been so encouraging to, to um, get this message and I think now I'm all fired up. Pastor Art reassured me that nothing can stop me. If, it, if I'm called for it, I can definitely get it. Pastor Art, Basically, it showed us that we do have a purpose and that we should put our word and our focus in God and also to just be more confident and know that things will work out for you even though you don't see it right now. Did you know about the half night prayer taking place on the 12th of April at 1830 in Bloomington, Pretoria and Johannesburg? That's right, family. We are gathering in prayer as we all know that there is power in prayer. We will see you all there and don't forget to invite your world. said, treat everybody as the most important person in the world and see how your life changes. And that's a wrap from today's edition of The News. Let us know in the comments what your Sunday highlight was. And thank you for tuning into our live broadcast with Pastor Adboso. You are going to be blessed out of your souls. Yes, TD, in our family, we have dynamic praise and worship prepared just for you. So let's stand to our feet. Good morning, CRC! Are you ready to praise the King of Kings this morning? I'm so excited to be in the house of the Lord! Yes! Come on! I wish I could tell you Wish I could describe it, but I can't contain it, can't keep it to myself. There aren't enough colors to paint the whole picture. There aren't enough words to ever say what I found. Come on, say wonderful and beautiful and glorious and holy. He is merciful and powerful. Who we're talking about? That's my king. Hey. We declare the glory, give Him all the honor, all together worthy. Who we're talking about? That's my King. There's no one before You. Yes, we will adore You. All of this is for You. Who we're talking about? That's my King. Sing, Jesus, You're my King. Yeah, I'm not letting the rocks rise. Without joining the glories, there 
Come on, show me your glory. South Africa, that's our prayer. Show me your glory. We are going to see God move in 2024 in South Africa. Show me. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Come on, let's make it our prayer. That His presence will cover the earth. Come on there in your homes, every church gathered today. you believe 2024 is your year of glory and you are going to see the goodness of God in your life come on you can give him praise come on heaven is coming down this will be your year of overflow for the glory of God come on we are going from glory to glory by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the name of Jesus will be exalted in South Africa great things are happening behind the scenes believe me God is in control and God will have his way and the devil is already a defeated foe and the church of Jesus Christ is marching on from glory to glory to glory welcome TBN hundreds of thousands watching with us TBN yet to one gospel uh, praise TV Facebook live uh, YouTube uh, live see us here online correctional facilities radio stations people all over the nations of the earth what a great privilege to bring God's word to you every single week in your home, sitting in Russia, Israel, America, Europe, Iran. Come on, we can thank God. We are preaching the gospel live to the Muslim countries, India, Pakistan, China, and of course, Africa. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, give somebody a high five or shake the hand of somebody and say, your best days are ahead of you in Jesus' name. Come on, tell them. Amen. Good to see so many of you here today. Welcome to Val with us this morning. And uh, let's get into the Word right away. Philippians chapter 4 verse 12. In the Passion Translation, Paul says, I know what it means to lack. I know what it means to experience overwhelming abundance. For I am trained in the secret of overcoming all things. Say it this morning. Say, I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me. Say today, say I overcome all things because I hail from God, come on. The secret of overcoming all things, whether in fullness or hunger, I find, listen, that the strength of Christ's explosive power infuses me to conquer every difficulty. If you are facing any form of difficulty, I want you to know this morning you're not alone. God is with you and God is in you and God will give you the power to overcome every difficulty. Say amen this morning in Jesus' Name. So the Apostle Paul says, if God predestined it for me, I can through Christ who strengthens me. If God meant it for me, I can. If God said it, that settles it. If it's God's will for my life, I can. I will not be denied. If this is God's destiny for me, I will not be denied. South Africa, we will not be denied the promises God has for us. Listen, things are going to change in our education for the benefit of our children. On, uh, on, 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 on Wednesday night, uh, we were uh, opening the building in, 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 in uh, Kimberley and there was some, uh, uh, yeah, well, we give God the glory for that. Other people hate what we do, but we give God the glory, okay? And... Uh, uh, because God's uh, kingdom is not an ever decreasing kingdom, it's an ever increasing kingdom. So the church has to take territory and the church has to win more souls for God. That's just how it is. Amen. Jesus said, occupy until I come. That means do business, increase my kingdom until I come back again. So we're not going to become settlers and campers. We are here to plunder hell and populate heaven. If you believe it, say so amen. Okay. So obviously um, I spoke about making Jesus more famous. That's what we do and why we do our churches, etc. But then also I knew there were people of influence and I spoke about this bill they are passing now where our children have to be taught transgender, whatever, and uh, teachers have to be trained, etc. 
And uh, one of the ministers said, they came to me, said, Pastor, we never knew you felt feel like it, about this like it. So we are going to get involved. Write a letter and we are going to get involved. Um, the top leaders in South Africa. So we believe we are going to change things in our education system. Say amen. So that our children will not be corrupted, but we can preserve Christianity. I said we can preserve Christianity for generations to come. We are not here just for ourselves, right? We are here to secure the future for our children and our children's children. We are not here to play church. We are here to be the salt and we are here to be the light. And uh, uh, respectfully, I say to the ministers in government, uh, you are Esther's and uh, you need to stand up for God because it's easy to stand up in silence. But when it matters, that's when we need you to be a Daniel and Esther, God placed you in that ministerial position as a child of God, not to be silenced, but to speak up for the kingdom of God and to protect the future of Christianity in South Africa. We need to wake up. America has become a secular country. We need to wake up, stop putting our head in a hole and think it's okay just to sit and act like a Christian. America, listen, have gone from 50% Christianity to 30% Christianity in the last 20 years. As a matter of fact, they are now the 11th most unchurched country in the world. America, in God we trust. The same thing is trying to happen to South Africa. Secularism wants to take over. Secularism wants to dismantle the church of Jesus Christ so that people will turn away from God. We have to wake up. We have to stand our ground. We have to fight for the middle ground. We have to fight for the holy ground that God gave us. We have to stand for the church. Oh, come on, man. I'm talking to politicians. We have to stand for the church of Jesus Christ in South Africa. So uh, we respect all, all our uh, politicians, but God's given us a platform and we will use the platform to encourage Government to think clearly. Well, somebody comes with an idea and I asked an intelligent question. I said, how do we even get to passing a bill like this? No, some educators came and suggested. I said, who are these educators? Give us their names. Who are they? That come with a proposed bill because it's not the government. So who is it? From Canada? From America, you come with a pro proposed agenda and want to force it down to Africa? Wake up. It's more at stake than your opinion. The future of Christianity is at stake in South Africa. Listen, Elke Duomeni, Leicester. Elke Pastor, Leicester. The future of Christianity is at stake. You say, Pastor, you sound overdramatic. Really? We're not yet to, 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 to live a self-preservation life. We are yet to be light and salt and to prevent the tide of evil to take over. Are you listening? Well, if you do, say amen and give the Lord a praise. Come on. <clears throat> no, I think you can clip better than that. Some of you came to church for whatever reason. But for those of you that came to church to give the Lord a praise, give Him a praise in Jesus' Name. Amen. So my message this morning, simply, under destined not to be denied, delayed, but cannot be denied. Delayed, but cannot be denied. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, the Bible says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. Everybody will die one day. No matter how big you are today, how big your opinion is today, you're going to die one day. And you're going to go stand before God and give account. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 10, the Bible says, I've seen the God-given task with which the Son of Men are to be occupied. God-given tasks, not living our own lives. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity in their hearts, except no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice 
and to do what good in their lives. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the gift of his labor. It is the gift of God. So as a matter of fact, God wants you to enjoy life. Can you say amen, right? Your marriage, your children, your career, your business. God wants you to live a happy life. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Says, I know what God does. It shall be forever. So if God blesses something, it cannot be cursed. If God is in something, you cannot stop it. If God is not, you won't have to. Are you listening? So if God is in your destiny, you, you can't stop it. Only one who can stop it is you yourself. He says nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so men can fear before Him. So a delay does not imply a denial. Very often it is a time of preparation, preparing your character, helping you to grow in your level of trust. Because I know we want everything now, right? We are an instant generation. Young people want to uh, get a job and immediately live in a big house, etc. It's not reality. This life is a journey. And the bigger the promise, the greater the journey, and the more the challenges you will face. So people say, God, give me a big dream. A big dream means a challenging journey. But at the end, that dream, that vision will come to pass if it's for the glory of God. So listen, God's promises have no expiry date. So, so we need to be careful to pray these prayers and say, Father, by the end of 2024. No, your prayer is, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't put God in your timetable, right? You are on God's timetable. And God will make all things beautiful in His time because He will cause all things to work together for good to those who love God who are called according to His purpose. So the good, the bad, the ugly will work together for good. And you will come out on the other side more refined. You will come out the other side approved by God. You will come out the other side stronger. You will come out the other side more humble. And you will live a life for the glory of God. Are you listening to me this morning in Jesus' Name? So God's promises have no expiry date. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord does not delay as though He were unable to, Act. And he's not slow about his promises as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient towards you, not wishing for any man to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So the reason Jesus hasn't come back is because we've not done the job. People are still, too many people are unsaved. That's why we cannot play church. We have to preach the gospel. We have to disciple the nations because God is waiting for us. So people prophesied now with this eclipse. I spoke at a conference. I never knew another pastor spoke about the eclipse. Uh, that, that was a sign of the return of Jesus because, because the, everything is going to go over certain cities, etc. And I said, listen, uh, uh, when the number of Gentiles is fulfilled, so we first have to get the job done. Then Jesus is going to come back according to God's timetable. But we have to encourage one another. The Lord is coming. And it may be now. I don't know. But we have to plan as if God is not coming in our lifetime, but prepare as if God is coming today or tomorrow. So the delays in your life can be a blessing in disguise. And most definitely, if you don't become bitter, make you a better person and develop Christ-like character in you. James chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Now, we don't want to do that, right? But that's what the Bible says. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So when hell breaks loose in your life, that's the time to go, not in a valley of depression, but that's the time to rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Come on, somebody going through something this morning. For a five second, just get to your feet and give the Lord a praise. Come on, because God is orchestrating your deliverance. He says, the testing of your faith produces patience. Not something we like, right? Especially in traffic. Every day your patience is being perfected. 
especially if you drive in Cape Town. My word, Jesus, help the help Cape Town. I know you go there on holiday and it's like uh, fantastic because you're in a holiday mode. But I mean, I, you know, thank God for Tafelberg. But the rest, um, die mense verstaan nie van bestuur langs en dan gaan rechts so by nie. Nee, hulle bestuur die selle spoed langs mekaar. Hier so betek hier in Pretoria ook. En denk ek, wat denk jy man? So you say, pastor, preach to yourself. The Lord is perfecting your patience. Well, I'm observing people who can't drive and women on their cell phones texting and doing their makeup and their hair at the same time, putting my life at risk. But let patience, 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 geduld, geduld, jopse geduld. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, mature. Without trials, character cannot be developed. If you have everything your way, you will be a spoiled brat Christian. So some things will be delayed so that you can become a better person. It's not easy. But he says through the delays of God, we mature. We become perfect in character. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Changes our values, changes our desires. From Joseph having this great dream and it was all about himself. And then after 16 years of literally going through every kind of betrayal and adversity, when it comes to the palace, it's no longer about Joseph. It's now about the purpose of God. That's why I quote again Romans 8 verse 28. All things work together for good to those who love God and who are called according to His purpose. Not all things work together for good. If you are serving God's purpose, then all things work together for good. The good, the bad, the ugly. And at the end of the day, God will have the final say and God will be glorified through your life. Romans 5 verse 3, the Bible says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, trial, difficulty. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character. So I'm going to say it again. It's not that God is putting you through something, but God is with you when you go through something. And... Um, that's where your character is developed in the prison. The character is not developed in the palace. The dream talks to the palace, but God talks to your character. That's why we can rejoice in times and seasons of delay. Because when you are serious about your journey and the destiny God has for you, there will be times that you will find yourself in a waiting room where it seems as if God has gone silent, but He has not. He is working behind the scenes. He is planning your preparation. Come on. He is preparing your tomorrow in Jesus' Name. That's why you don't give up in times of delay. See, it's perseverance, character, and character hope. Mature hope that does not disappoint. So just because something takes time or something takes longer does not mean that God has changed His mind about His plans for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God still says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you, sitting in that chair this morning, a future and a hope. No matter what you are facing, no matter what battle, no matter what opposition, no matter the storm, God says, I'm with you in a Chadrach, Meshach, Abednego. I'm with you, Daniel, in the lion's den. I'm with you, Jehoshaphat, on the battlefield. You raise your hands and you praise me and I will cause the enemy to be scattered in Jesus' Name. But my plan and my purpose for your life will come to pass, yea and amen. So Habakkuk 2 verse 2 and 3 in the Living Bible says, and the Lord said to me, write my answer on a billboard, large and clear, so that anyone can read it at a glance and rush to tell others. But these things I plan won't happen right away. Can you handle it? I mean, can you handle it? That's why we have to walk in the Spirit, right? And uh, patience, part of the fruit of the Spirit, because when we walk in the Spirit, we don't allow impatience to take over, right? The joy of the Lord is our strength. 
Because when things go opposite to what you are trusting God, it's easy to lose your hope and your trust in God. You have to be secure in the plan that God has for your life and understand it's a journey. It's not a destination. It's a journey. Your life is a journey. And maybe you have summited a mountain. There is another mountain for you to summit. God's never going to stop leading you onward and forward. So for those of you that have dreams, and everybody should have a dream, those of you that have visions, here it is. It says, these things I plan won't happen right away. CRC is a journey of 38 years. It's not a journey that started yesterday. It's a journey that started in Lady Brand with six people. One family, their domestic servant, and a lady, Rosemary Peterson, a black business lady that came from uh, Masiru. That's where the church started. It started with a crowd, started with six people, started with a family. I mean, remember in those years, I uh, wanted to be an evangelist and I had this vision of preaching to thousands of people, etc. And there God calls me to Lady Brand, six people. And I work for a year and it grows to 33 people. And 23 people move the end of that year. And I feel, God, where are you? Have thou forsaken me, Lord Jesus Christ? I'm wasting my time. Ever been there? But God was preparing me, right? Every Monday I felt like quitting, but thank God I never quit. Every Monday I preached my heart out to 13 people, then 15 people. Sunday I'm in, then 20 people. And every week I visited my entire congregation. I was a good pastor in 30 minutes because they would all sit back in 1986 on the front porch. You know, that's the Afrikaner. Lady Brown, I'm also the before stoop. And I could just go from house to house and say, Hello, Wim Gert. Yes, Wim Gert was a real person. That was my band, okay? Before you think we are now grand and we have a rock band, all I had then was a concertina. A track lafir. Hallelujah. This, that. A track lafir, man. Maar ons het hier geloof. Ons het hier geprijs. Ek het een visie gehad. Ek wou opgeen, maar prijs God. Ek het nooit opgegeen nie. Because I'll tell you, there was something on the inside strengthening me. That is the power of Christ. The infusing power of the grace of God that said to me, keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. And, and, and you preach and uh, one person gets saved. And that was my band. And the reta on the guitar. And ek met die tambourine. I said to Tamarine the other day, the evangelist, I said, next time you come, I'm giving you a tambourine. Amen. So she can praise the Lord like Miriam. Okay. In any case, so uh, that was it. But we built the church. Because it's not about the style of music. It's about the message. The method is never sacred. Get over it. The method is not sacred. The message is. The honor is. I wonder how you would like it if we, I'm going to do it one Sunday just for all of you. And take it back because we're celebrating 30 years, but it's actually much more than that uh, since the name became CRC. And uh, I'm going to get that up there. And Um Gert was a smoker, you know. So uh, before he came in, he had his first cigarette geroek. He was a padskraper from the dorp. Geweest. And uh, then he played his track lafir. And oh, there was a guy, Gus, also. Um, and that was it. But we praised God. With alive, alive, alive forevermore. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. Music have advanced, and we thank God for it, that now we can sing songs. We can glorify God, and every generation has a song, and every generation has a sound. Come on. And we have the right to express ourselves to our God the way we believe the Holy Spirit wants us to express ourselves to God. Come on, just say amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he says, Again, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3 says, The things I plan won't happen right away. But it's going to happen how? Slowly, steadily, surely. The time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Say Amen. 
Just be patient. Like somebody prayed and said, Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. Amen. It's not going to work like that. You develop patience through trial and test and tribulation. And that's the difficult part of Christianity, right? When you're praying for something and it's not happening in your time frame, your timetable. Understand that God is still in control. That that delay that you're experiencing is not a denial. Psalm 37 verse 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Don't be envious of evil men who prosper. So when you have a dream from God and you make up your mind to go for it, you will be forced into God's timetable. I hope you get what I'm saying to you this morning. Because when you pursue God's dream for your life, you are going to run into delays. It doesn't matter who causes the delay, but delays are part of the journey. The good news is that no matter what causes the delay, if God meant it, it will be, and that delay does not imply a denial. So you don't give up hope. You don't change your mind. You don't cancel the vision. You keep on reading the vision and you run with the vision and you are faithful wherever you find yourself. Yes, we feel frustrated when things ha don't happen according to our timetable. And it's, understand it's difficult for us to understand why things don't happen the way we want them to happen. And then even sometimes in life, the totally opposite happens. You're trusting God for a child and suddenly you can't fall pregnant. You're trusting God for health and suddenly sickness breaks out in your family. You're trusting God for something good and a tragedy happens. A curveball comes. It's called life. But my God says in Psalm 30 verse 5, weeping endures for a moment, but joy comes again in the morning in Jesus' Name. Tough times don't last, but tough people will always outlast any tough situation. So it's very hard when we cannot see God in action, but that doesn't mean God is not acting. He might be invisible, but this invisible God is orchestrating your plan of deliverance your next step, the next step of your promotion. And again, that promotion may not be what you think it should be. Sometimes that promotion is a demotion in the natural, but we don't look at things in the natural because we walk by faith and not by sight. So sometimes that demotion is to get you to the place where you trust God more, where you become more reliant on God and if you don't see it as a demotion in the natural, you can experience it as a promotion where you grow deeper on the inside, stronger in God, stronger in faith, more determined in the Word of God. Because we don't walk defined by the time frames of this world. We live dependent upon God's time frame. That's why the Bible tells us again and again to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. That means lean wholeheartedly upon God, knowing and believing that God is in control. Can you say amen? So the Bible is full of delays. It's not a fairy book, fairy story. Abraham, our father of faith, 25 years. And yes, they were calendar years like our years. 25 years when God promises him a son, 75 years old. 100 when the child is born. Moses, 40 years. Caleb and Joshua, 45 years of delay. But thank God, uh, Caleb never lost his faith. I love that scripture. One of my favorite portions of the Bible in, in uh, Joshua chapter 14, when, Josh, when, when uh, that generation dies out and he comes to uh, Joshua, that's Caleb, and he says, as my strength was then for war, He's 85 years old now. He's not ready to retire. He's ready to possess what God has for him. Whatever delay he experienced never made him weaker on the inside. But he became more determined. He says, as was my strength then, so still is my strength now for war. That really is what Paul says. He says, I've learned to live reliant and dependent upon the infusing 
grace of God on the inside of me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, I'm not a give upper. I am not a quitter. I am not a lie downer in the Name of Jesus Christ. When life knocks me down, I can get back up again and continue in the journey toward my destination by the power of God's grace. So David, 14 years of delay. Paul, or David, 16 years. Paul, 14 years. It's not Paul is saved today and he's an apostle tomorrow. 14 years. He doesn't run around with a business card and he's 23 years old and he calls himself Mr. Know-it-all. No, he actually goes into the wilderness and he is taught by God and he comes back with the revelation of Christ in you and righteousness by faith. And he teaches through the epistles that doctrine which we believe now. But for 14 years, he disappears off the scene and he's taught by God. Then he comes back with the revelation of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Joseph, let's talk about Joseph for a moment. And if you wanted your daughter to marry someone, would it be Samson or would it be Joseph? I suggest Joseph, the one that went through more difficulty, the one who already experienced some pain in his life, some setbacks in his life, the person who realizes what life is all about. So he asked Joseph, he's an innocent boy, he's loved by his father, he's his father's blue-eyed boy, not that he had blue eyes now, but he wore the coat of many colors, the favor of his father was upon him, as God's favor is upon each and any one, every one of you. So get busy with your life and stop bothering about the coat somebody else has. You live your life and you enjoy the future God has for you because you, my brother, have to run your race and you, my sister, will stand before Jesus Christ one day and give account of the life you lived, not the life somebody else lived. So Genesis 35 is five. Listen, it's amazing, Christians. Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him. You know, you know, people who don't have dreams don't like people who have dreams. People who don't have dreams feel insecure by those who have dreams. So be a dreamer. I mean, the language of the Holy Spirit is, is dreams and visions. When you spend time in God's presence, Acts chapter 2, when He pours out the Holy Spirit, young men will see visions. Every young person here under the age of 60 should have a vision because uh, the Bible calls middle-aged uh, 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 60. So um, some of us are almost there, amen, uh, 30 times two. But, um, you, but, but if you're older, you have to dream. So if you don't have a dream or a vision, it means you are not pregnant. Say, so what are you saying, Pastor? You're not spending time in the presence of God. Because when you spend time in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and the Holy Spirit is going to give you a vision. It's going to give you a dream for your life. Everybody should have a dream. Everybody should have a vision. Whether it's to be a great doctor, a great lawyer, a great teacher, a great ambassador, a great parent. Everybody should have a vision. Proverbs 29 verse 18 says, where there is no vision, people perish. So people who don't have vision are bothered with people who have vision. So he asked Joseph's brothers, he has a vision and a dream and he tells his brothers, I have a dream of greatness. I'm going to do this for God and this for God and this for God. And they hated him. Amazing. And he doesn't learn from it. I always tell people, be careful who you share your dreams with. If you share your dream, share it with another dreamer. Because people without dreams will try to kill your dream. But you stay true to God and you keep on fighting the good fight of faith and you pursue the purpose of God in your life. Come on, because God will sustain you and God will protect you against all odds of hell because one believer in God make a majority. Oh, come on, say amen in the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what people do at your workplace. It doesn't matter if people demoted you. It doesn't matter if people sidelined you. It doesn't matter if people are persecuting you at your work. God will vindicate you. God will fight for you. God will take you through that valley and God will get you to the palace on time, which means it's His time, it's not your time. Say Amen in Jesus' name. 
So you, you want to play first team rugby, please play first play for the fifth team. Amen. It's not okay that your dad gives the os om geslag te word vir die school. Nou speel jy aaspan en maar jy kan nie, ver, jy kan nie verdedig nie. Amen. You, you have to come through the ranks. Yeah. Part of the challenge we have in our country is entitlement. People have shortcuts to positions of authority. You want to be a ruler, there's no shortcut. You want to get to the top of whatever God has for you, it's not an overnight success story. Three steps too. There's no three steps. There's one step. God, G-O-D, God. Right? An inheritance gained too easily will bring shame to that person. So people have to go through a process to understand the value of things and why God has blessed them. Otherwise they become arrogant and abuse whatever God gives them. So that's why the journey is important and pain is part of that journey, right? Not God bringing pain, but the pain of life is part of it. And it's either going to uh, cause you to quit or it's going to make you stronger because you will live more reliant upon God's grace. Amen? If you think you're going to go anywhere without opposition, you're wrong. It's not happening. So he tells the dream, I have to close, I've got two minutes on television. He says, um, and in verse 8, so his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us or shall you indeed have dominion over us? Now remember, the dream God gives him is for them, but they can't see it. They're so filled with envy that they cannot actually see that God wants to use him to bless them as well. So the Bible says they hated him even more for his dreams. It's his brothers. It's not the Egyptians. It's not his enemies. It is his brothers. Sad. Sad how Christians hate in the name of Christianity. Maybe one of the most tragic things in this world is the hate that comes from Christians, so-called Christians. Verse 9, then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have another dream. Yes, we are going to build another church. Yes, we are going to have another crusade. Yes, we are going to win more souls for Christ. Yes, we are going to reach more places for Jesus. Yes, we are going to go louder on television. Yes, we are not going to be ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, CRC, somebody say amen and give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. To our television audience, we love you. We respect you. Thank you for being with us every week. May God bless you. Remember, God is with you in it. God is with you through it. And God will get you to the palace at the right time for His glory in Jesus' name. You serve Him. You stand strong. His grace is sufficient for you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So he has another dream and... In a, a, a few more minutes and I'll, I'll, I'll be finished um, and he says this time the sun and the moon and the seven stars bow before him so his father observes the dream is of God but verse 11 says and his brothers envied him jealousy you know it was jealousy that incited um, the Pharisees to incite the Roman rulers to crucify your Lord and Saviour you understand it uh, so you cannot be fueled by love and hate. So these brothers sit in the same home, but they hate their brother. They're jealous of their brother. And that leads to them trying to kill him. They want to kill their own brother. Think about that. His brothers, his flesh and blood want to kill him. Why? Because of jealousy. Why did Cain kill Abel? Jealousy. Jealousy. It's a little bit of Jealousy. 
Somebody else gets ahead in life and you become jealous. The Bible says rejoice for those who rejoice. Be happy for other people. Don't, don't get envious. Don't get jealous. Be happy. If God blesses another business and it's a child of God, be happy and say, I'm also standing in the same queue. Thank you, Father, you will bless me. Thank you, Father, you will bless me. Hallelujah, come on. Father, you will bless me. Hallelujah. Come on, Father, you will bless me as well. Thank you for your blessing, your blessing, your blessing, your blessing. I'm standing in the same queue. I'm not an orphan. You are no respecter of persons. So God, if you did it for Him, you can do it for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Get inspired by God blessing your brothers and your sisters. And when people go through a difficult time, then go weep with them. Don't rejoice in the demise of somebody else. Go weep with those who weep. Pray for your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Be different to those people in the world. We are in this world, we are not of this world, right? We are called to live by a much higher standard. But we are not called to roll over. And we are not called to be intimidated. And we are not called to shut up. We are called to be louder and more determined and more unstoppable. Like the early testament church. To take more territory for God. And I'll tell you more devils are going to get mad. And more people are going to get mad. But if it's God's hand upon us. We will not be stopped and we will not be silenced. Shout Amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. So verse 18 says, when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired, Skinner Becker, against him to kill him, whisperers. Then he said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit. And we shall say, some wild beast has devoured him and we will see what will become of his dreams. I have to close, listen. If God is in it, you cannot stop it. If God is in it, you cannot stop it. Come on, my brother. Come on, my sister. You don't quit. You don't quit. You keep on keeping on knowing that God is orchestrating your future and your future is in the palm of His hand. So the delays you are experiencing is not a denial. Third time, all things work together for good. Amen. To those who... Love God. You don't love God and you're a hater. God bless you in any case. Right? And if you're a Christian hater, how's that even possible? A Christian slanderer and Satan is the slanderer. Somebody that bears false witness. The Bible says God hates those who bear false witness. Somebody that lies. John 8 verse 44. You are of the father, your devil, a liar. You do, you can't just do anything you want to do in the name of Christianity. If you are fueled by love, which his brothers were not, you will pray for one another, love one another, support one another, and even your enemy, you will not render evil for evil. You will not be overcome with evil, but you will overcome evil with good. Those were the teachings of Jesus Christ. Totally opposite to the spirit of the world. That says an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. You do this, I can do that. You do this, I can do that. If we live by an eye for an eye, soon the whole world will be blind. Because everybody has a beam in their own eye. Everybody. But we are called to look for the speck in our eye. And we are called to pray for one another and to support one another and to love one another. And even the worst sinner out there to be an extension of the love of Christ for that person to they get that person saved. Church, Christian. The Bible says if you cannot love your brother whom you can see, how can you love God who you cannot see? Christianity is L-O-V-E. Love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Come on, listen to me this morning. 
Give the Lord a praise. Come on in the name of Jesus. God is on your side. God is with you. And God will have the final say. Believe me, I said God will have the final say. God will have the final say. Come on, give Him a praise. A delay is not a denial. God will have the final say. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And every man, every woman will stand before this God one day. And you will give account for every word that you spoke. You will give account for everything that you did. One day you will stand before God. And you will give account to this God. Remember that. So live life and live for God and live to uplift people in the name of Jesus. Come on, give Him one more praise here today. Come on, to God be the glory. Give Him the praise. Hallelujah. Give Him the praise. Come on, CRC. You know when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't see it, you work it. You never stop. You never stop working. Come on, sing it out. a journey but this journey that we call life it has to start somewhere you see the Bible says draw near to me then I will draw near to you so there there has to be a moving first from from an individual for God to move in their life and this moving has to start somewhere else at the cross up until you have given your life to the Lord God will do nothing with your life because you see, there's, a, there's a, a real fight between darkness and light. And the strength of darkness is the absence of light. When there's too much darkness in the life of men or women that they don't have the light, we're talking Jesus Christ. When people speak and they talk, you hear, but you don't understand. You see, but you can't. You, the certain things you can't you can make what is actually happening then we come every single Sunday we hear the great message again and again again and again but then because there's too much darkness there's less of understanding because you don't have the light then it becomes a religious activity every single Sunday because you see when the power of God comes upon you and, and, and you give your life to the Lord to become a child of God God can lead you He can guide you and He can show you the reason that when we hear the great message 
and we don't react and we do nothing, it's because there's certain things that we have not let go in our life. Because the Bible says this earthen vessel, this body, this earthen vessel, there's a treasure in the inside of us. But that treasure in the inside of us is to show the incredible, incredible power of God in us. That this power we have is not for our own. It's to reveal who God is in our life. The reason that that light that is in us, that power in us is not yet revealed. It's because we have not accepted the Lord. And we have not become broken before him. Because up until a man is broken, God will not use you. To the extent to which a man is broken, will be to the extent to which God will use you in his life. Yes, God wants to bless us. He says, I've come that you may have love and have it more abundantly. But I want you to be, I want you to be your Lord, your Savior. I want to have your heart. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So that I can bless you and prosper you and increase you and multiply you. So that you can live a comfortable life. So that you'll be able to financially advance the kingdom of God. And most importantly, to reveal practically the passion and the love of Jesus Christ. But up until I can have your heart, all this blessing that will come, but you'll miss it. Because you're carrying something that does not attract. You know when a baby is born in the family? The parents, they look after the baby. They get the baby into a routine. Up until that baby is at a certain level. Then they set you up to succeed. That's what God does when you give him your life. When you are a young Christian, because he knows rules of engagement. The animal will come and kill and destroy you. He comes. He says, this is my boy, this is my baby, this is my daughter, this is my girl. I will maneuver this person. Moses has the, has the successful story, man of influence. The enemy knew this man is carrying something. But God has to protect the baby. And all of us, we know the rest is history. Joseph, the same thing. So when God wants to do something with you, he will make you to come to church and altar call has been, has been, has, has been presented to you and, you, and, then, and then you leave. Because you see when you got something in you, that treasure, I'm talking brokenness now. We will not even be able to hear. Your life will be like a city without walls. Any man, any spirit can come in any direction. Because there's no accountability, there is no control. There's no only one access point into the city. Then the spirit of the kingdom of darkness will come. They will speak to you, they will direct you, they will teach you, they will do everything. Because your life, you don't have Jesus Christ. You're like a city without a wall. But this morning when you give your life to Jesus, this morning when you give your life to Jesus, he embraces you. He embraces you, then he covers you with his blood. Then he says, this is my son I've called, my daughter I've called. Then the enemy will know, this one I cannot access. So I want every eye, clo every eye closed this morning, believers praying. Because you see this thing that we do that we call Christianity, this is no joke. The kingdom of darkness is no joke. The kingdom of, of darkness is no joke. The enemy will want to come kill and destroy you, your marriage, your finances, everything. But when you have that light of Jesus Christ that I'm talking about and you are broken before him. God will elevate you. God will take you to a whole new dimension spiritually. You will be a man and a woman of God that will be able to download the kingdom of heaven's stuff in your life. And when you come to a situation, you will know what to do. But I urge you and I beg you this morning, my family, my brother. We are doing this thing because we've got so much love for you. Up until you can give your life to Jesus, Jesus will do nothing with you. Yes, you will leave. Yes, you are anointed. By the power of the Holy Ghost. But when there is no overflow in your anointing, there's something wrong. That's why we have to go back to the kingdom of God and say, Father, here I am. In other words, you give yourself, your heart, your mind, your soul into Jesus and say, God, here I am, use me. And then when you become his son, and you become his daughter, victory is guaranteed. 
when the enemy comes God deploys the angels he will guide you he will lead you this is the Jesus that we we want you this morning to give your life to or to commit yourself or recommit yourself in that area if I hear this morning say pastor I want to give my life to Jesus I want to commit my life again to Jesus I want to run for God I think there's been too much of darkness in my life I want to see this light I want to immediately now raise your four hands and say pastor please pray with me in Jesus mighty name pray with me pray with me raise your hands thank you my sister raise your hands why thank you doctor come on come on family we can do this thing come on don't leave this place the way you came don't leave this place the way you came don't this Sunday become like any other Sunday they're right there in the balcony if you want me to pray for you raise your hands right now in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty name he will never leave you nor forsake you until he completes what he has promised in the name of Jesus Christ so family this is what we're going to do whether you raise your hand or you did not raise your hand or you know somebody that has to have to be here encourage them come with them so I'm gonna ask you to take everything that you brought to church your Bible your stuff your handbag your boyfriend your girlfriend whatever you brought to church please come with everything that you brought to church and come meet the leaders and the and the pastors here at the altar because God is gonna do a deep work in you this morning a deep work God will do come on family let's encourage that the people are coming let's encourage them as the people are coming in Jesus mighty name come on family Come into us as pray. Come into us as pray. Come into us as pray. God is doing a deep work. God is doing a deep work right now. Lives are changed. Destinies are changed. The children of God are coming. There's a party going on in heaven right now. The angels are rejoicing. The heavens are rejoicing. Because my sons and my daughters are coming back home. Come on, family, let's encourage them. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, come on, come on, come on, in Jesus' name, Father, we thank you, we thank you for life, we thank you for life, in the name of Jesus, come on, intercess us, pray, 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 pray in the name of Jesus, pray in the name of Jesus. Well, you know the Bible is very clear when you give your life to Jesus and he become your your Lord and your Savior you qualify yourself to become the partake of God's inheritance then you can go boldly before the throne room of God and say father in the name of Jesus Christ I'm your son but up until you are at that level when you come to prayer you come in like a slave it's like you have to work for this thing but when you are a son what God has is already yours the only thing you have to do is to ask for the last time I don't want the music for the last time please uh, I wanted to talk to the people next to you because you see sometimes the chance comes once and sometimes doesn't have to repeat itself because you see we want God to do certain things in our life but we're so afraid sometimes to publicly come before and say father use me so if you know you have to be here don't worry you can leave your husband there come you can leave your wife there come you don't have to explain yourself because this is your journey in that relationship this is your journey as a married couple each and every one of you have got a journey to complete in your own life we don't want your husband to become a distraction or your wife to become a distraction I 
I'm going to ask the people that are here, please um, pray this prayer with me. Loud and clear. The congregation, I'm going to ask you to stretch forth your hands and pray this prayer. Help them. This is a new family now. Your life will never be the same again. God is doing like now, God is doing a deep work in you. A deep work in you. He's sending forth certain things on your way to remove, to bring together, to destroy. Because when you become his son, he becomes everything about you. Your life is in his hands. So I want you to pray this prayer and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I give my life, my whole being unto you. I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord and my Savior. This morning, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, to forgive all my wrongdoings in Jesus name today Lord I start from a new clean slate all my sins are forgiven I believe with all my heart that you've died for me on the cross thank you Jesus amen and amen come on family let's encourage them Family, I'm going to ask you to go with Pastor Elzan to the counseling room. They will pray with you and then they will bring you right back into the service again. Please, family, I want you to turn to your left. Go with the family. Go with the family. Come on, family, let's encourage them. These are new lives. Lives have been changed drastically by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is why we do church. Amen. Family, take your seat as we watch this week's announcement. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. We all know that encounters with God have the chance of producing a major shift in a person's life. But if we weren't in church on Sundays, we would lose out on the chance to have these many encounters. Being physically inside the house is vital for our spiritual growth, our mission and godly relationships. And so our love for our fellow man should drive us to fill our churches with more and more people. We've seen that for many people, transport is a constraint that hinders them from coming to church. So we've made it our responsibility to fill buses and bring them here to experience something special and transformative every week. For all the years we've been doing this, we've seen many become essential members of our move as pastors, ushers, counselors, musicians, and many more, all because we brought them in on these buses. Yes, the church is more than a building, but when people are physically inside the house, lives change, and we cannot allow people to miss out on God because of transport difficulties. We still have a mandate. Every Sunday in Bloemfontein, Pretoria, and Johannesburg, approximately 9,000 people are brought in through our bus ministry, giving all of these people an opportunity for an encounter with God. This costs us almost one million rand a month. You see, family, we're the ones responsible for bringing people to Jesus, and our commitment to doing this cannot waver. And the master said to the servant, go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. We thank every generous CRC member who is committed to helping us bring in more people for the kingdom. Your giving enables us to grow our church and see the lost get saved. Let's continue to sow faithfully as we expand God's kingdom from glory to glory. God bless. The ushers can now stand as we receive the offering. Please note, for your security, the doors will remain closed. Thank you. Took 
the lash and scourge for the hands and feet that were pierced by nails for the sacrifice that has on the day we crown we fall face down and we wish we all cry out you are worthy Family, we've got new members orientation directly after after the service. If your leaders they brought you, we want to become a member. Please can you wait for us on this block after after the church, and then Tuesday we're starting a Bible uh, Bible school online, and also we've got a divorce support on the 18th that is going to be online, and we've got John 3:16 session teaching also on uh, physically at the church on Tuesday. Father, we just wanna thank you and honor you for the words. We want to thank you for every man, every woman that have given into the offering. We want to thank you for every man, every woman, every child, every student, Lord, that are building your kingdom, supporting your kingdom, bringing people to church, reaching out to them, revealing your love and your compassion practically in the, in the ways of God, in the marketplace. We thank you for those who are standing in the gap for this church to become what it is. We thank you for people working behind closed doors that we don't even know nothing about. We thank you for men and women that have taken the burden with the leader of the church, that they are praying, Lord, every single day to see the manifestation and the power of this church. We thank you for men and women that are working, Father, that will only, not only increase them in the dimension of the Spirit, but Lord, you will, you will empower them for success in their life. We thank you and we honor you, Lord, that this coming week will be a week like no other in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, family, if you believe it, say amen in Jesus' name. Don't forget tonight, Pastor will be preaching, invite your family and your world. See you tonight. See you.